let's zoom back over here. First, we did carbon. And if you look at our drawing of carbon, you notice that we have two energy levels. The second energy level is the valence shell because it's the most outer one. And there are four electrons on that valence electron shell. So we're going to say four valence electrons. Let's do the same thing for chlorine. We have three shells here, three electron shells. The very outside one is the third one. And if you count, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons on that outer shell. So I want you to go back to your four atom drawings that you did before, these guys right here. And I want you to count up how many valence electrons there are on each of these four. So hit pause, and then we'll get back together and go over the answers. All right, welcome back. Let's start with A, hydrogen. There's only one energy level, so that is the valence shell. So hydrogen has one valence electron. Oxygen over here has two shells. The outermost one has one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. Magnesium we did down here, it's a little tough to see. Magnesium has three shells. The valence shell has one, two valence electrons. And fluorine has three shells also, and there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons on the valence shell. So it's easy to figure out how many valence electrons an atom has by drawing a model of the atom. However, it takes up a little bit of time. There's a much faster way to determine how many valence shell electrons there are for any given atom. And this can be determined from the element's position on the periodic table. So look at the periodic table in front of you. And we're going to look at the groups. Those are the columns that go up and down. And each column has a certain number of valence electrons. So I want you to write this on your periodic table. This is group one, all the way over on the left, the one that starts with hydrogen. Every atom in group one has one valence electron. In group two, which starts with beryllium, every atom has two valence electrons. We're going to skip the whole middle of the periodic table. The patterns for the middle of the periodic table are a little bit more complicated. This is group 13 over here that starts with boron. These guys have three valence electrons. Next door in group 14, starting with carbon, all of that group have four valence electrons. Group 15 have five. Group 16 have six. Group 17 have seven. And group 18, they all have eight valence electrons. So this is pretty simple. It's also easy to figure out who has similar properties. So if you look at neon, underneath neon, there are a bunch of other elements that also have eight valence electrons. So neon is an element that doesn't really react with any other elements. It's very stable. You can say the same thing about argon, krypton, and xenon because they also have eight valence electrons. So use your periodic table to figure out how many valence electrons lithium, nitrogen, bromine, and argon have, and also answer question E. All right, welcome back. We're going to use our periodic table to figure this out. Uh, the first one is lithium. Lithium is in group one. Lithium is here in group one. Since it's in group one, it must have one valence electron. Next, we'll find nitrogen. So looking on the periodic table, here's nitrogen. It's in group 15, which has five valence electrons. Bromine is all the way over on the right hand side in group 17. We know that everybody in group 17 has seven valence electrons. And finally, argon is all the way over in group 18. And we know that all of the elements in group 18 have eight valence electrons. Last question, sodium is explosive when it comes in contact with water. Name two other elements with similar properties to sodium. So looking at the periodic table, we'll find sodium it's in group one. You can pick any other element in group one. So lithium, potassium, rubidium are all possible answers. Possible answers here are lithium, uh, potassium, and rubidium.
So that's it. You should know about atomic structure and also something about very simple electron configuration, as well as how to figure out how many valence electrons each element has just from looking at your periodic table.